Okay, uh, hello everybody. This is uh, Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, we're continuing our study of the book of Proverbs. Uh, I call this Wisdom Wednesday. Every Wednesday we're continuing to work our way through Proverbs. And now we're in the middle of chapter 11. And if you haven't seen the previous uh, episodes, they're already uploaded on my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher, so I hope you go back and watch those. Uh, but we're going to uh, pick up where I left off last time. We're going to start with uh, chapter 11, verse 13. But first, uh, let me uh, welcome my brother Sam here. And uh, Sam, would you introduce yourself and tell everybody uh, about your channel and what you've been up to? Hi, yeah. I, uh, my channel name is Thick Shades. And... Um, uh, I've been busy, of course, on YouTube and Google+. Plus. Um, there are a lot of things going on, especially nowadays, a lot of deceptions, and try to straighten things out a little bit, uh, doing whatever and however I can. So God bless you all, and hopefully this uh, study will be, uh, again, very edifying for all. All right. Thank you, Brother Sam, for joining me. And uh, um, Brother Sam has a lot of YouTube channels. They're all listed on his, his, uh, I guess, primary channel, Thick Shades. So I hope you subscribe to his channel. All right. Uh, so now let's go to, uh, I'm going to read each of these verses in the KJV first because I'm, I hold a position of uh, not KJV only, but KJV first. And then we'll look at it in the Amplified Version because what I like about the Amplified Version is that uh, it, it does exactly what the name implies. It just amplifies the verse. It's, it, it's kind of like what Brother Sam and I are going to be doing today. As we read the verses, we're going to be amplifying, expounding, commenting uh, on, on you know, how we interpret the verse, the meaning of it, the deeper meanings of it. So the Amplified Version um, ex expands the verse. Uh, let's start with verse 13. It says, A talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, Brother Sam, I, just, I love the KJV. You know, it's the one that I use as, the, as my scripture and i look at other translations to maybe help me understand some things so i get confused but the language of this kjv is just it's so poetic the toll tale bearer revealeth secrets uh, but he that is a faithful spirit concealeth the matter you know, what, I, I like kjv because it's it's such a it's straightforward you know i like being straightforward i like to be you know open and there's no going around it just tells you like it is you know mm -hmm. okay so a tale bearer I guess that's someone who's telling tales yeah, and, he, he, he and backbiters and all that and he re, he's revealing secrets I mean I mean if you and I had a secret and, you know, obviously, if it's a secret, we don't want other people to know. I mean, people are entitled to secrets. You know, I don't have to tell everybody every single thing in my life or something. I might talk to you privately about a private matter, and it, you know, I want you to keep it secret. But this person here, he tells stories. He's revealing secrets. Right. And, and then the other person, there's always a contrast. That's what, one thing about Proverbs. It always contrasts two different people. Uh, uh, the 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 fool and the wise person, you know the uh, the the lazy person and the person that's the hard worker, uh, the the tail bearer and the and the person that's trust you can trust to keep the matter secret, you know. Right. So talk about this verse before I go on to uh, the uh, amplified. Well, you know. Yeah, as you just said, it's quite a comparison, and especially. Um, when we talk of Proverbs 11, I think you are in this. Yeah, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 13. Right, Proverbs chapter 11. And I think it's comparison between the righteous and the wicked, so to say. Um, and also, we, and regarding verse 13, um, a 
tend to not hang around with people who gossip and backbite because uh, he will do the same thing about about you, you know. Um, and and the scripture does clearly say that you know that sort of things ought not to do, and that sort of things will not gain anyone to the kingdom of God. Uh, so here in verse 13, again, clearly compares between the wicked uh, terror bearer uh, who is revealing uh, secrets. And for whatever reason, you know, maybe it could be uh, to backbite that person or could be in his nature or could be um, for, for, for money. Uh, but whatever it is that this sort of person, a terror bearer, will not respect you and your uh, your disclosure and uh, whereas the faithful uh, you know he, he does uh, keep loyalty uh, to, uh, uh, towards you and 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 the sort of a faithful spirit uh, conceals that sort of matter mm -hmm. Let's see what the Amplified says on that verse um, 13. Um, he who goes about as a talebearer reveals secrets, but he who is trustworthy and faithful in spirit keeps the matter hidden. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's sad when you are betrayed and uh, you, know, you, you tell somebody something in confidence uh, and you know maybe it's a very personal thing, and and you're trusting them to, and then the next thing you know, uh, everybody's talking about it. It's, it's sad when you can't trust someone. Right, right, and also not just that. Um, that sort of secret when you share with someone, uh, if that person is is a uh, tale bearer, and, and by him revealing such secrets. That sort of things can be also exaggerated and snowball, and um, a lot of lies can come about uh, that is not even true. So, firstly, as Christians, I think we ought to keep ourselves uh, bearing tales uh, or revealing secrets of other brethren, and secondly, uh, the um, based on that sort of uh, Information we ought not to that actually fact checking. You know, I've been accused of a lot of many many things, um, and most of them, and if not all, are not true. And sometimes among atheists, they uh, use that against you, uh, making up more lies on top of more lies. So that sort of things uh, we ought not to do. Mm hmm Yeah, okay. Uh, the, um, I, I feel that uh, this study of Proverbs has already helped me quite a bit. You know, it's, we've talked about this in the past, how it is probably a very good uh, habit to uh, read Proverbs every day uh, to brainwash ourselves. Uh, I have a T-shirt that says, uh, I'm brainwashed. It talks about the verse in Romans, uh, be not conformed to the uh, something of this to the the ways of this world, but uh, be renewed, but, but be renewed by the uh, I forgot. But just talking about the Holy Spirit, uh, don't, don't conform to the world, but let the Holy Spirit change you. Right. And um, it's, the more that we read these verses in Proverbs, since it's, it's to give us wisdom, we get wiser. And it's nice to be refreshed and, and read these things again. I, I haven't read Proverbs in, until this study. It's probably been a few years since I looked at Proverbs. But it's so refreshing to get these all these wise principles again and be reminded of them. All right. What you just talked about is Romans 12, too. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that is that what what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yeah. That's Amen. What you, uh, yeah. Amen. That's uh, 
the the Holy Spirit, when we when we get born again, the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside us forever, and, and it, it wants to transform us. And uh, every person ha- decides if they're going to listen to the Spirit and and uh, uh, kind of surrender and let this let the Spirit start transforming your mind, the way you think, and the, the way you think then affects the way you act. Uh, or, or will you will you uh, surrender and let the Holy Spirit tr- start transforming you, or or will you uh, resist the Holy Spirit and grieve the Spirit? Uh, we I, I don't think that uh, everybody does it perfectly, but we all do it to varying degrees. Uh, right. Is there someone else there? Oh no, I thought I saw somebody else. I just hear a sound. Uh, okay, let's look at verse uh, 14 now in the KJV. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Yeah. Well, uh, this is a, a lot like uh, many of the other things in Proverbs that I've referred to. There's recurring themes. And now this, this is the first time I, I recall the idea of counsel being introduced into these uh, books of Proverbs. And uh, it's, uh, it's going to be coming up quite often, the idea of will you listen to counsel or will you be so full of pride that you don't want to listen to people? But if you're wise, you'll listen. It says where no counsel is, the people fall. So if you're not willing to listen to people, my brother, you know, if you have some counsel for me and you think you, uh, I, I'm off in some way and you want to uh, correct me and I should be willing to listen to you. And it even goes on to say, uh, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. I mean, I should listen to a lot of people. And then I hope that I can have discernment and, and humility to determine uh, uh, if the counseling is uh, if really needed uh, sometimes people can counsel you, and maybe they're wrong, but, but you should be willing to listen. Well, yes. Um, also, you know, uh, you have to be wise enough to uh, discern what is true counsel, uh, meaning, you know, good, good advice versus bad advice. Uh, but if there's no advice at all, then people will fall. Uh, and if they're true um uh, Councils, then obviously the um, there will be there will be uh, safety. <laughs> I don't know how else I can put it. Safety meaning a peace, um, uh, assurance. Uh, so I'd rather be uh, peaceful and be assured than than than, than fall. Yeah, if, if one person uh, comes to me with some kind of criti- criticism or correction, I'm, I want to listen. But there, there's a, should, it should be more weight given if there is a multitude of counselors. If, if state after state after state is coming to me <laughs> and correcting me about something, then I shouldn't be foolish and, and think that, oh, I mean, it's not only one person, it's a lot of people who tell me the same thing. Maybe, maybe I, I better just accept the fact that um, I'm, I'm probably wrong on this. Everybody seems to think so. The majority is not always right. But it, should be, it does give more weight if you have uh, many people telling you the same thing. Right, right. We can actually uh, observe that throughout the history as well. There, there have been many kings and those those kings that um, that rejected many councils uh, actually they fell and thereby uh, people people suffer and and uh, you know um, a lot of bad things could happen. So it is very important uh, to take on certain advice, and it is, it is also even more important, important to recognize those advices. Yeah. I guess uh, uh, there are three things that I can think of that that could give me some kind of counsel. Uh, one are, ca- case, uh, are, are the saints. Um, and the more saints, the more convinced I should be. But then there's also the Holy Spirit 
but the Holy Spirit sometimes, uh, you know, we have to test the spirits. Sometimes it's not really the Holy Spirit. We have to test the spirits by going to the scriptures. Uh, so by looking at the scriptures, listening to the saints, listening to the Holy Spirit, uh, hopefully we'll be able to learn and, uh, you know, see if we're uh, on the right or wrong path. Right, because the Holy Spirit guides us and teaches, teaches us to all truth. Yeah. yeah I, I said this once to back probably a, a month or two ago when I hang out with a couple of the, the brothers, and uh, I'm sure that I, oh. I was I was correcting one of the brothers, and I don't think he's uh, he hasn't talked to me since. <laughs> but it's uh, uh, pe sometimes people want to think that the Holy Spirit's telling them something, and then the, then it's like thus saith the Lord. But I've had him say that the Spirit tells them one thing, and then I'll have another person tell me the Holy Spirit tells them quite the opposite, and and that tells me that. I'm not going to listen to anybody's uh, uh, conviction of the Spirit because it may not be the Holy Spirit. I'm not. I'm, but I'm going to listen to them and then look at the scriptures. I'm going to test it with the scriptures. Right. That's what the scriptures um, is good for. Mm -hmm. you can, uh, confirm and, and reprove and, and, and such and instructions. Okay. Let me look at the uh, verse 14 in the. Amplify it, see if there's any more to it. Where no wise guidance is, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Uh, that's pretty straightforward, too. Uh, okay, let's look at verse 15 in the KJV. Um, he that is surety for a stranger shall, shall smart for it. <laughs> he that he that hurt, hurt shall your surety should be sure. Oh, that's a tongue twister there. Well, surety is means that you're promising uh, to be responsible for student debts, like a co-signing for a loan. And that uh, says, he that is surety for a stranger shall smart for it. Smart, I guess, means uh, suffer. Huh? And, and he that hated the surety ship, sure. So, I guess I, I should be uh, co signing for people's loans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It ha I ha I've had, uh, at one time, uh, I had a lot of money. I don't have a lot of money anymore. <laughs> I get by okay, but one time I had a lot of money, and it seemed like a lot of people. I had more friends, but they were all friends in me. <laughs> and, and and I was I was quite uh, uh, liberal about uh, helping them and loaning them money, and uh, I I always felt that if I loaned this lend this loaned or lent whatever the correct way is someone money. That I, in my mind, I had to accept the fact that uh, if I didn't get it back, it was it would be like a gift, and I would just accept it. But I, it was also a test of of their integrity. And I found out that uh, uh, the the best way to lose friends uh, is to uh, is to lend lend them money because then they want to avoid you after that. When they're not paying you back, they want to avoid you. <laughs> Well, you know, um, there's old saying uh, that if you're going to lend anyone money, you know, consider it as given, as, you know, don't even expect to get it paid back. Um, so, you know, I mean, what, so that's like, that's one of the things that I, I do. So when I do lend some people money, whether small or, 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 or large amount, um, I don't really expect that, you know, I don't really respect the return. <laughs> I just kind of think of it as it's given. And, and if he does pay back, then, you know, um, it's certainly that's, that's out of expectation. But, yeah, um, it's for, you know, first thing is it better not to lend anybody money, especially to strangers. <laughs> and, 
And secondly, if you are going to lend any money, then you know, don't expect to uh, to have it back. To you know, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if this verse is in Proverbs or if it's a Shakespeare quote, but there's a saying: "A lender nor a borrower be." Uh, it's just best not to get in the habit of lending or borrowing money. Uh, if you have to borrow money, it's probably you were. Sometimes if you had bad fortune, it wouldn't be helped. But many times it's because you were irresponsible and not uh, not, intel not intelligent about the handling your money. Uh, and, um, and if you uh, if you lend money to someone, then uh, you're running a high risk of, of losing your money and losing your friend. Right. Um, well, uh, what does, let's see, the KJV says, I mean, the Amplified says any more about that. Verse um, 15, is it? He who becomes security for an outsider shall smart for it, but he who hates suretyship is secure from its penalties. So we really should be really adverse to lending people money or co-signing for their loans because you're going to probably suffer. There's a high chance. In, um, even, even if you have a good friend, sometimes you lose the money and you lose your friend too because now they're, they're – uh, they, as I said, they'll avoid you because of this money. And of course, you could just contact the friend and say, oh, don't worry about the money. Don't, you don't have to pay me back. But it does tell you something about your friend's integrity. And so that's, that's uh, if you want to find out if your friend has the integrity, then just lend him some money and you'll, you'll, that's a good test for it. Yeah. Well, you know, as I said, you know, best not to lend anyone money. And if you are going to do so, then ex uh, Expect, uh, ex uh, ex expect that you won't get that money back. <laughs> Don't expect that the, the money to be returned. <laughs> yeah, I would say, I mean, sometimes in family, uh, especially, uh, you, there's, a, there's a need to sometimes help them out. Uh, and sometimes you can give them the money or you can loan them the money, but also, you have to consider the fact, can you afford to lose the money? And because instead of thinking that you're, you're planning on getting it back, think, if I don't get it back, can I, can I survive? Is this, is this critical? Because <laughs> if you think you, if, if you are depending on getting it back, then you, you may be disappointed, and then you may end up putting yourself in a real hardship. And, and then, of course, that could stir up anger and resentment towards, towards the your friend or family you love to. Yeah, you know, for me, money is just money. You know, if I lose money, then that's fine. <laughs> that's been always my attitude um, yeah. all throughout my life. Because, you know, whatever the money uh, 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 I have lost or, or uh, will will lose, I'll, I'm going to, like, get the return in thousandfold in the kingdom of God anyway. So... <laughs> Not that not that I'm saying that uh, there there's money in the kingdom of God. But you know what I mean. That's that's all that's all fine as long as if you lose that money, you still have enough money left to pay your bills, so you're so you're not having to borrow money. I'll tell you what though, you know, it's better to it's better to lose money that way than through um, some bad habits or gambling or or what have you. Yeah. You know? So money is money, it comes and goes. That's why it's called currency. It's like a current, you know, it comes and goes. Uh, you're certainly not in love with money, from what you're telling me. It's not that big of a deal. As long as you've got enough to, you know, uh, you know continue living your, you know, pr providing your needs and whatever your needs are, then. I don't think uh, too much beyond that point. Okay, I'm going to look at verse 16 in the KJV. A gracious woman retaineth honor. Yeah? What happened? 
Can you hear me? I heard some kind of server error. I got somehow dropped out. I don't know. I couldn't hear you for for a couple of minutes. Oh, okay. I was going to move on to the next verse, but I I, I just said that it sounds like your attitude towards money is that uh, uh, you're you're not affected by that verse. The love of money is the root of all evil, uh, because you're not in love with money, where you're you're so ambitious, and that uh, it becomes. Some people go so far with that that they uh, it's it's kind of a form of idolatry. They and, right. I, I'm very far. I'm, I'm very far from loving money. Um, every day I try to uh, make my living uh, without having any need for money, um, because it's, it's 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 not easy to do so right from the start. But every day when you have less and less of necessity for money, I notice that the life can be the life can be a little freer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have a a long time friend that uh, um, he, he's a very hard worker, very successful. He has a high income and he has a high standard of living, and he's and he's had that for many many years, and, and through a lot of effort and a lot of intelligence. Um, but he, uh, my attitude is that uh, I would rather have a lower standard of living as long as I'm comfortable. Uh, so that I'm not stressed out for having to be under pressure to to earn enough to 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 pay for all these things, and uh, and but his attitude was he wanted to have a lot of bills, a lot of expenses, because it it put him in a position he was pressured to work harder and earn more, and uh, you know that worked out for him. He's he's earned more, but he's been under a lot of stress. Right, that that would be lower standard of living. Actually, you know, it doesn't matter. I, I used to make a lot of money too, uh, more than anyone can imagine, probably. But thing is, um, when you are slave to that sort of thing, uh, you are bound by it, and you will not going to have free of life. And thereby, no matter how many things you might own, but those things that you own might. Uh, end up owning you, and and you are a slave to that. So that is quite of a low standard of living. So when you have less need for money, I'll say that is higher standard of living. It doesn't matter what sort of things you eat or wear, but mm -hmm. only matters what's really going on inside. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. If you're not peaceful, then how could that be higher, 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 higher living? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, comparing myself to my friend, who will remain unnamed, but he, uh, he, he's uh, a couple of years older than me, and he still has to keep working all the time. And me, uh, I've been re retired for 10 years. I retired at age 54 because I was able to you know, manage my money enough and make a plan so I could retire early. And it's, I, the, the Lord blessed me. I, I made a kind of a, I hate to phrase it as a deal, you know, but I, I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, if you'll bless me financially uh, in this plan that I have, and so that you know, I, if I succeed, uh, I'll be able to quit working, and then I can put my time into ministry instead. Instead of working and punching the clock and working for an employer and having my time, as, that's a form of slavery. I, I must, I, I got to be there certain hours of the day and do certain work for them. And I said, if you can free me up from that by blessing me financially, I can retire. And then the time that I have can go into ministry. And that's what it's been for 10 years now. I've, I've had the time to do this and many other forms of ministry. Uh, so it is a, uh, to me, the standard of living for me is okay. My house isn't as big as it used to be. You know, my car isn't as new as it used to be. My, but uh, but uh, I I have free time. I have time I can put into ministry. All right. All right. Let's uh, look at the next one. Uh, this is uh, verse sixteen, KJV. A gracious woman retaineth honor, 
and, and strong men retain riches. That's pretty much straightforward. Yeah, let's see if the Amplified expands on that at all. A gracious and good woman wins honor for her husband. <laughs> okay. uh, and violent men win riches, but a woman who hates righteousness is a throne of dishonor for him. Hmm. I don't know how they uh, got all that out of that verse. I wouldn't have thought of all that, would you? Um, that's quite a straightforward um, verse. Um, a lot of women, they, you know, they like to be gracious, and um, but nowadays we see opposite of that, you know. Um, it's not high, you know, like the movement of feminism or how um, they kind of expose themselves, uh, almost being naked. Uh, that sort of things will not bring them any honor, you know. Uh, and likewise, uh, the uh, when it says strong man, it's not, it doesn't mean physically strong. It means uh, more like... Uh, um, diligent and and strong-minded, you know, and uh, uh, that sort of people will retain riches. And this verse clearly uh, outlines, you know, what we can do to gain riches, and what women can do uh, to retain honor. But apparently. Uh, Nowadays, a lot of times, uh, it, it is, it's kind of opposite. For among men, it's very competitive, survivor of the fittest. You gotta, you know, uh, you gotta, you gotta kill other person, so to say, mm -hmm. <laughs> to uh, to get yourself uh, uh, higher than others. And also, likewise, uh, women, they they don't really. Uh, they are not really gracious. Uh, rather, they're quite impotent. Uh, they're quite. Um, uh, they they tend to, um, you know, appeal to their sexual appearances and, and things like that. And certainly, those will not um, bring them any honor. You know. Yeah, uh, I was interested in this. Uh, contrast here in the KJV it says strong men retain riches but in the Amplified uh, I'm surprised it says uh, violent men win riches uh, I don't know how they get violent out necessarily strong but uh, I guess uh, some men are strong and violent and conquer you know, a lot, in, particularly back in those days when this was written, uh, if you're strong and violent, you, you know, you would take, you would conquer and you would take property from people to, who were not as strong. And that was just the way things were. And, and that's the way the world's history is. You know, the stronger countries conquer the less countries and take everything they have. <laughs> right. Hmm. All right, let's go to verse 17 in the... KJV it says, The merciful man doeth good to his own soul, but he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. Mm -hmm. huh. Well, um, I, I, I always love the contrasts. Uh, you know, you always have one guy versus another guy. I mean, this, this person compared to another, one's good and one's bad in a certain way. So being merciful, of course, is a virtue. Being cruel is uh, sinful. So what you get from a good thing is a good, a good result. Be, um, the merciful man doeth good to his own soul. So he's reaping what he sows. He's merciful, he gets blessed, his soul is blessed. Uh, but then the person that's cruel, the result he gets is his own flesh 
troubleth his own flesh. Well, troubling in his own flesh, uh, that could just mean that he could end up being killed uh, because or physically harmed. Right. I mean, you could be cruel, doesn't mean you're going to always win, you know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Sometimes you're you're going to be cruel to somebody, but you're going to it's going to backfire on you. It always comes back, and the reason why it does is that um, when one becomes cruel and that sort of things uh, get in the habit of thing habit of um, being cruel, and uh, you are even more cruel than before, and one way or the other. And that sort of things will come back to you and actually harm you, whereas the likewise the merciful man, you know, will be even more merciful, uh, merciful, and that sort of things will come back, and 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 basically that's what the the verse is is talking about, I think. Yeah, I um, you know, I can certainly confess um, a lot of bad things in my past, but um, the, the being cruel to someone physically, uh, I, I've probably been cruel to people verbally sometimes, you know, when I've, when I've, um, and, and regretted it later, said cruel things. Right. Um, we all do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but being cruel to someone, like physically being cruel to them, uh, I've never done that. I couldn't. I it never even entered my mind to be physically cruel to someone. That's something that is just beyond uh, comprehension to me. Of course, it's it's not that uncommon though. There are a lot of fit, cruel people. Right. The Amplified says, um, "The merciful, kind, and generous man benefits himself for his deeds return to bless him." But he who is cruel and callous to the wants of others brings on himself retribution. <laughs> yeah, it's that law of reaping and sowing that is so uh, 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 powerful that uh, hey, it, it, what goes around comes around. Uh, in, the, in the Asian thought, it would be called karma. You know, you get. It can, it'll come back to you, you know, but it's the, uh, we're, we don't get away with our, uh, with what we do. Um, you and I are not going to go to hell for these, any bad things we've done because Jesus paid for our sins and we're, we're, we promised eternal life in heaven. So that's not something we need to worry about, but we still need to understand that the law of reaping and sowing is still in effect for, for even Christians. Right, and the later verses of this chapter will expound on what you just said, you know, reaping what you saw, you know. Okay, let's go on to verse 18 in the KJV then. Uh, the wicked worketh a deceitful work, but to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. Yeah, that's, that's the law of reaping and sowing right there. Nope. The wicked work of the deceitful work. So again, it's the comparison between the wicked and the righteous. And this whole chapter is like that. And the cruel, and the cruel of course, is obviously the wicked. And also the, uh, the merciful man is obviously the righteous. And the whole rest of the verse is actually expounding on those uh, comparison. Mm -hmm. to, Let's see what 18 says in the Amplified. Uh, uh, the wicked man earns deceitful wages, uh, but he who sows righteousness, that's moral and spiritual rectitude in every area and relation, shall have a sure reward, permanent and satisfying. That sounds good to me. That certainly is motivation. We have the Holy Spirit transforming us, our attitudes, our mind, and, and therefore our actions. But we also have just our common sense and reasoning. It's reasonable when I hear something like this to say, that, that I would like to do that. I can make a conscious decision to, uh, through free will to say, hey, um, I'm going to choose to make an attempt to try to do the good things 
because uh, I know that God will be pleased and I will also get uh, back good things instead of, uh, so I, I want to be conscious of that and actually make an effort. Uh, uh, one of the brothers uh, that uh, is not on YouTube anymore, uh, he was bringing up this question about human effort being part of, uh, don't you think human effort is a factor uh, when you're a Christian? Aren't we supposed to be making an effort? And uh, I was saying, well, we can't equate effort to salvation in terms of getting it, keeping it, proving it. Uh, if a person doesn't seem to be making any effort, we can't judge them, their salvation on that. Uh, but as far as effort, I think that the main effort we need to do is walk in the spirit. As long as if, if we're in prayer and in fellowship and doing ministry, uh, these things will uh, keep us walking in the spirit. And uh, we won't have to even consciously think about making an effort to, to do what good rather than bad. It'll, it'll come more naturally to us. Uh, but there is there is a place where hey there's much there's nothing wrong with saying hey can't what is, is there anything wrong with someone actually trying to do good? Well, I mean, I mean, since we are carnal, uh, it does take certain effort to be in Christ. You know, uh, once we are saved, we are constantly walking the faith in Christ, and every day we face challenges. And more challenges, the better, actually, because it builds up our faith. So, you know, for me, I say bring it on so that I can grow my faith in Christ, you know. Yeah. Okay, back to the KGV, verse, uh, let me see, 19. As righteousness tendeth to life, so he that pursueth evil pursueth to it to his own death. You know, again, the comparison between the weak, righteous and the wicked. You know, life and death. It's the life and death matter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, this is, uh, we, could, uh, we could symbolize, I think this is talking about a person's actions. But we could also symbolize this and, and, and relate it to salvation, too. Of course. You know, the, the, the righteousness we see from we receive by putting our faith in Christ gives us tendeth to life everlasting. Uh, so that he so he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his own death. Uh, and so the death here, instead of a physical death, could be we could think of that as being the second death. Rather than having life everlasting, you get the second death because you never did get saved. You never put your faith in Jesus. And therefore, the result is the second death. Yeah, no evil shall prevail. Mm -hmm. Let's look at 19 in the Amplified. Uh, he who is steadfast in righteousness uprightness and right standing with God attains to life, but he who pursues, pursues evil does it to his own death. But, you know, even though we can symbolize this and, you know, spiritualize it, uh, I really think it's intended to talk about our actions. Um, so he, he who is steadfast and righteous, in other words, if we're doing the right things, um, we're going to probably have life, not not eternal life for salvation because of the good things we do, but we're going to probably have a longer, healthier life if we're doing good things. Uh, but if we're doing evil things, then we're probably going to have a shorter life. It's going to probably result in an early death if you're always mixed up in evil. Right. And also the um, so-called alternate evil, I, I would say, um, uh, would be willful uh, rejection of Jesus Christ and um, when people continue to reject Christ they'll continue to uh, do quite evil things uh, whether they think it's right or, or wrong uh, but by rejecting Christ you end up in first and second day. Mm -hmm. Well you, you, you referenced, you called it the ultimate evil uh, another way the scriptures refers to that really is it's the unforgivable sin. 
It's uh, uh, Jesus died for all of our sins. Now, the only thing that we're required to do is believe in him. And if, if we will not put our faith in him, that's the one thing that uh, will keep us out of heaven that's, and, and uh, get us into the lake of fire. So it, in a way, if we refuse to believe in Jesus, um, it, it's the sin of unbelief. It's, it's actually the original sin, too, because I think in the, in the, in the garden, uh, before Eve ate the apple, uh, the sin was already committed. Because she 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 no longer believed God's uh, statement that if you eat the apple you're, you're going to an apple eat the fruit I don't know if it was an apple I think maybe more likely it was a fig but uh, God says if you eat of that tree you're going to die that day and and, and the, the devil says no if you eat of this you won't die that day so she, she but instead of believing God she believed the devil. So she had the sin of unbelief, and, and she died. That's the original sin. So I think she sinned before she ate the apple, because before she ate it, she had already, in her mind, no longer believed God. Okay, well, uh, go to verse 20 in the KJV. They that are of a froward heart are abomination to the Lord, but such as are upright in their way are his delight. Froward is, I think, this word's come up many times. I think it's someone who's just basically dis disagreeable, disagreeable all the time. Um, uh, they're an abomination to the Lord, but such as are upright in their way, upright in their way are his delight. Um, you know, some people, some people want to say that. Well, I, I don't. I mean, even in the scriptures, we can we can support the idea that God is not angry with us. Uh, you know, He's uh, Jesus reconciled the world. He's not angry like you know that Jonathan Edwards thing. Is sinners in the hands of an angry God, and that's how so many people see God. He's angry with everybody all the time, and but. Uh, I, I don't see God as this angry God. And rather, rather, I see him as a loving God. That's we've already he, he already paid for our sins. Now he wants to embrace us through faith. And uh, but so, um, some people want to act like uh, because we have this reconciliation that God is not happy or sad by what we do. And I, I think he still is, does have an attitude, even though our sins are paid for. I still think he will be happy or sad. I mean, matter of fact, the Spirit says we grieve the Spirit. So um, the idea that, uh, uh, you know, um, some people I, I'm seeing emphasize, I think overemphasizing the fact, that, okay, we're forgiven and, you know, God's not angry with us anymore. That's great. That is true. But I do think that we can still break his heart, and and we and we can also delight him. Anything? Any any uh, agreement or disagreement with that? Well, you know, I was I was uh, when when the Holy Spirit is grieved, uh, I think. I think he is grieved because he is sad. <laughs> so I don't think that's uh, something that uh, we should do. But as sons of God, uh, when we when we do wrong, when we sin, obviously we'll be spanked. So <laughs> you know, uh, it's best to to walk the path of the righteous than than the, the wicked. You know. Yeah. Uh, sometimes these consequences, uh, the, in the, the law of reaping and sowing, sometimes the consequences is, is, is just um, uh, humanity. Uh, like you, you, if you uh, go out and uh, commit some crime and the police catch you, they put you in jail. <laughs> you know, that, so the society, uh, you know, uh, um, right, you're going to have to pay for it one way or the other. 
Yeah, so, so sometimes the, the law of reaping and sowing is affected by society, rules, regulations, and laws. And then sometimes you're right, that, that God gets involved and will say, uh, yeah, you need to be disciplined, be chastised, spanked, as you say. Um, but I, I, I do think that uh, this verse still is true today. Uh, the, the flowered heart are an abomination to the Lord. I mean, God's not happy with, with certain kind of attitudes and actions even today. And, and, but when we're upright, we're doing the right things, we delight God even today. I, I, I don't think that, I don't think God's attitude towards sin and, and good conduct uh, is, is different after the cross. I mean, obviously, he, our sins are paid for, and we have salvation. Right, right. But still don't th- I don't think that God is just like totally immune and, and not affected by when we do bad things and, and when we're doing good things. I, I think he is pleased and gets happy. I think it's more to do with rewards later, you know, than, uh, rather than a salvational issue and how we can live this life better. Yeah. For example, in the verse 20, uh, froward heart, uh, it's like twisted heart, you know, like when um, when people are um, uh, froward, um uh, it's like you are interpreting that person as a different way, in, in a way, and you're misrepresenting that person, or uh, you are, and thereby you're acting out of malice and so forth. And I think that's because of the uh, self righteousness uh, in our nature, in a way. So as long as we are in the righteousness of, of God, I think that our even our uh, twisted heart will be straightened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, uh, the, the Amplified verse 20 uh, uh, says, They who are willfully contrary in heart are extremely disgusting and shamefully vile in the eyes of the Lord. But such as uh, such as are blameless and are and wholehearted in their ways are his delight. So, um, I mean, um, you know, I, I've said in the past many times that uh, the uh, Jewish laws, the Mosaic laws were never given to Gentiles. Uh, and a lot of people, you know, they're confused and think that somehow that uh, uh, when you become a Christian, that, that uh, you become like a, a Jew and a Christian. You've got to follow the Jewish commandments. And well, there's not just 10, there's 613. And, and, but the, the, the mistake they're making is that these were never given to the Gentile world. They were given to this small community that were sep- uh, separated from the world and to, be, to be a distinct, peculiar people. And, and uh, so when we, uh, when we, those laws don't, don't apply to us in, in, in any way in terms of salvation. However, there's a lot of wisdom in the commands, even the Mosaic laws and also in, and we could look at Proverbs in some way. This is Old Testament. I'm not going to say because it's Old Testament that it doesn't apply to us at all. This is the, this is wisdom. Old and New Testament wisdom is a valuable thing. So uh, uh, we can we can continue uh, learning from the Old Testament, but uh, to think that the uh, the Old Testament laws uh, ever applied to Gentiles uh, is a is a big mistake that most much of the church got confused over. Uh, the only the only thing that applies to us is G, how Jesus condensed everything into what's called the royal law, and he says you love God and love your fellow man, and uh, if you do that, then everything's everything's covered. Um, and I, that's why I like that verse that uh, dawned on me recently. The uh, verse uh, when Jesus said. Uh, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. And finally, realize. Have you ever like studied uh, verses for like 
10, 20 years and all of a sudden something clicks. You've read it hundreds of times and, and then all of a sudden you get a, a revelation. And I think that's what happened with me in that verse is that my yoke is easy. Okay, it's easy to get yoked to Jesus and, uh, and receive the Holy Spirit and, and you're connected to God and you're regenerated and, and uh, uh, you're born again. But uh, the, that's easy. You put your faith in Jesus and that happens. But the, the burden, what burden do we have after that? Well, we do have one burden put on us. I mean, it's not, that's not too much to ask. He says, will you just love each other? Love me and love each other. And uh, that's not that God's not asking, imposing too much on us to to say, "Hey, come on." Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let me see. Okay, twenty-one in the KJV. Let me find that. Twenty-one. Uh, Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. I'm not familiar with that saying, though hand joined in hand. What do you think that means? Well, you know, the wicked, they kind of cooperate with each other, you know. Uh, they, even though they come, um, come together, the, even if the wicked come together, uh, they will not be unpunished. Mm -hmm. Seed of righteous shall be delivered. Um, I think you know when the chapter talks about the wicked and the righteous is clearly talking about uh, Jesus Christ and how we can <clears throat> live our life in Christ and the uh, the seed of the righteous righteous shall be delivered. Uh, that's uh, obviously the saints who are in Christ, uh, who walk the path in righteousness, uh, even, if, uh, even if the wicked, they all come together, uh, they will not escape the, the judgment. Yeah, I, I can see how this verse could be uh, applied in that way, even as a prophetic verse. Uh, all, all through church history, uh, the church has been persecuted and been in tribulation. Uh, and uh, I, I don't think that we, this idea of a seven-year tribulation is, uh, is valid, but, but I, I think the tribulation has been going on for 2,000 years. The church has been persecuted and martyred and so on. But um, here, if we look at the, apply this verse towards like a prophetic way, even when they... Uh, evil, the wicked join together hand in hand, uh, even though they're united, they, they'll still be punished, but the seed of the righteous uh, shall be delivered. Well, we know that uh, spiritually, uh, the, the, really the only righteous people are the people who receive Christ's righteousness, because man's righteousness is, is, is no value. God says that the righteousness of man is like filthy rags in the sight of God. So uh, the only righteousness that God really cares about is did you get Jesus' righteousness by believing in him? And uh, so I think in, you could apply this verse, uh, whether it's intended that way or not, uh, as a prophetic verse. Yeah. And also, of course, as you know, the seed, when he says the seed, it means um, like the offsprings. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. The seed and the righteous. Okay, uh, let's look at this in the Amplified uh, 20. That's a famous one here. Uh, 21. Assuredly, in verse 21, the Amplified. Assuredly, I pledge it. The wicked shall not go unpunished, but the multitude of the uncompromisingly righteous shall be delivered. All right, so that says the same thing. Let's, let's go to verse 22. In the KJV, it seems like the Amplified is more, um, uh, it's, it's less spiritual <laughs> than KJV. Yeah, well, yeah, to me, there's nothing can compare to the beauty of the, the po poetic uh, way the KJV is, is written. It's 
Do you ever uh, read much Shakespeare? Oh, yeah. I mean, I used to read, you know, when I was a kid, yeah. Yeah, and, and Shakespeare is, is, is beautiful type of English, too. And, and uh, probably and many of Shakespeare's words are famous quotations to this day. But that era uh, of English, that, uh, that English as it was written at that time, it's just so beautiful compared to the way we speak today. And so, uh, uh, and of course, the, the, the KJV translation does have verses that some of the modern translations have removed. They say that they were inserted, you know, whatever, however someone's position on that is, I don't care. But for me, those verses that were removed that, that, that are in the KJV are critical. I mean, we look at 1 Timothy 3.16, I think it's uh, the, the one that says, uh, uh, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. It says God. But the other translations say he was manifest in the flesh, or Jesus was manifest in the flesh. And but the KJV is the only one that says God was manifest in the flesh. And isn't that what we, we believe about Jesus? That God, he is God, and he became flesh. Uh, so, uh, and there's other verses. Uh, I think it's, uh, uh, what's, what's the one that... Uh, uh, it says, uh, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Well, that verse is, uh, I think that, that's 1 John 5, 7, I think. Uh, the, uh, these three are one. That, that's, the, that's, the whole, that's the Trinitarian verse right there. But some of the modern translations, that verse doesn't even exist. It's totally removed. So removing these... these uh, to me, that's that's why I always want to look at the KJV because it has some very important verses that some of the other translations don't even have. Uh, but the language, as you said here, it, it's seems to be more spiritual. At least it's more beautiful and poetic to me. Now you said verse twenty-two is a famous one here, uh, as a jewel of gold in a <laughs> in a swine's snout, so is a fair woman. Which is without discretion. Oh God, <laughs> that's a beauty. <laughs> that's a jewel of gold and a swine smell. God. Yeah. Yeah. I just picture the pig with um with that gold jewelry on on its nose. <laughs> How ridiculous! <laughs> it's the same with uh, women uh, appealing herself uh, with her physical means or beauty or, or outside, you know, whatever outside that she might possess, you know. Yeah, and uh, very few women have this, this discretion that this verse is referring to now. I, I, I'm i just, I, I'm really sickened by the state of the world today. I mean, I, I really don't think Sodom and Gomorrah or the times of Noah when God destroyed the world with a flood as bad as it was I don't think it could be possible it could be any worse than I see America today in terms of this uh, pornographic life that people are living it's just uh, and it's going to get even worse what's that and it's going to get even worse yeah, like, uh, like I, I uh, you know, some people would say, hey, Luke, you shouldn't watch TV, but, you know, I, between watching YouTube videos all day and doing this, what we're doing now, uh, some of the other time I watch some TV shows, and it, it, every new TV show that I watch, every one of them has homosexual relationships. It's just like they're, it's like they passed a law and said, if you want to make a, a new TV show, you've got to have homosexuals, graphic homosexual activity in it because we want everybody to think that it's just normal and common. And so they'll just all accept it as normal because they're putting it in every single show. And it's not just, uh, it's not just um, in, your, um, in what's in, insinuated, it's clear, it's graphic. And, and it's it's men with men and women with women and it's just everywhere 
and, and that and then even in heterosexuality it's just the promiscuity and the 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 the, the, the uh, uh, fornication that people are, think is just normal and acceptable today that people are just using each other just for sexual pleasure and complete strangers all the time and just that's just normal today it, it this discretion here a fair woman which is without discretion <laughs> oh, that's almost all the women that I encounter I've encountered and, and that I'm seeing on television at least and, and, and you just walk around you see that the way that women dress without any modesty and stuff it's, it's just all it's so common. I, I, I don't like it. I, well, I don't watch TV at all. So, but I know what is going on. And um, you know, yeah. <laughs> even this this so-called law the uh, Supreme Court passed, which is not even constitutional, they kind of trick people believing that. Um, you know the declaration of independence you know all men being created equal and so and so, uh, and so on and so forth is like part of the constitution but nowhere in the constitution does it say that um, all men are created equal uh, for the pursuit of happiness and liberty and 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 what have you and they appeal to that as if it is some sort of part of the constitution and making it into a law and having people um, actually get used to that sort of unconstitutional law, not only did they, they actually um, uh, destroy the Constitution, but also, um, in a way, controlling, manipulating people in, in, in that sort of way, that certain people will be, you know. Now the government is like your big brother, of course, uh, like God, that that you have to obey and depend upon. Yeah. Uh, and now that now that the, the legal battle uh, moves to another question, and, and that is, uh, okay, they're saying that the law allows gay marriage, but uh, what about the rights of the religious people who, through uh, so any religious system, they they are taught and believe that uh, gay marriage is not really a marriage. It's, uh, I, I don't believe it's a real marriage. Um, I believe real marriage is, is uh, a promise between one man and one woman to, to be a couple for the rest of their life. And uh, um, so if, if, if someone asked me to perform a, a wedding ceremony for two men or two women, I would refuse to perform this, this ceremony. And uh, if someone asked me to uh, uh, be the photographer or the, uh, or the baker uh, or at, for that kind of a wedding, I would say, no, I, I don't want to because I don't want to endorse it. I don't believe in it. And yet uh, they, could, they would label us as, as bigots, as homophobes, and uh, haters, uh, when we're we're just expressing that what we we believe in our uh, we believe the Bible, and uh, there's going to be a legal battle now to def what are the rights of uh, those people who have these religious convictions? Do we have the right to say no? I I, I don't want to participate. You know. Uh, there's there's plenty of other people that will bake you a cake and put two men on top. Mm -hmm. You know that uh, that the the cake uh, the the cake thing. <laughs> Those couple, the Christian couples who refused to bake uh, uh, wedding cake for lesbian couple, uh, they were fined. Um, what was that? How much was it? Over a hundred thousand, about one hundred thirty-five thousand yeah. dollars. But you know what? They got over three uh, three hundred fifty thousand dollars for donations. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that gets back to this what we said earlier about you know you reaping what you sow. You know they're blessed because of their righteous stand, and uh, you know I I don't want to 
uh, I don't want to uh, hurt homosexuals or I, I, I don't even want to be involved in any way. I don't even want to watch whether it's homosexual or heterosexual. I don't want to watch graphic sexuality on TV or anything. I don't like to see it in public. I, I think that, they, that that's uh, what, do that in private, whatever you're going to do in private, but don't, I don't need to know about it. And, and, uh, but don't expect me to say that it's, it, it, God accepts it as a, as a, as a legitimate uh, alternative way of life. And the good book says the wicked uh, surely will not go unpunished. Mm -hmm. uh, let me look at that verse in uh, 20, verse 22 in the Amplified, see what it says. Um, As a ring of gold in a swine's snout, so is a fair woman who is without discretion. So they didn't expound on that at all. That's interesting. I guess it's too obvious. <laughs> Could you? All right. Uh, let me see. Verse 23 in the KJV, the desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. Yeah. Against the righteous versus the wicked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, the righteous get, will get good results coming back to them. The wicked get bad results coming back to them. They get wrath. Because their desire is always the righteous. The, the desire of the righteous is only good, you know, because they con continuously think of, you know, what's good in a way, the righteous. Yeah. If they, but the expectation, um, you know, the, basically the result of wicked is nothing but wrath. Uh, brother, let me... Let me uh, confess here for a moment through this last few minutes that I've been talking. Uh, a lot of, many of the things that I'm telling you that I cannot stand right now, that actually sicken me, uh, I did these things. I was never a homosexual, but you know, I was, I was guilty of all kinds of sexual sins. And, and, and uh, sexual, you know, my generation, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That was our, that was our theme and our way of life. And and I didn't, I didn't think twice about all, all those things I did. And I won't go any more graphic details. But the point I'm making is, back then, those were the desires of my heart, and I didn't think it was ab abnormal or bad in any way. It just you know. No, no problem. Uh, just have fun. Live. And but now, I didn't make a conscious decision to change my attitudes. As we were talking earlier, the Holy Spirit has transforms us. Be not conformed to the something of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And and the Holy Spirit has transformed my mind, the way I think, my attitudes. I, were, it was never a conscious decision to say, well, now I, I. Don't agree with it. you know all this sexual promiscuity. Uh, I used to do it, but now I'm going to make a conscious decision because the Bible says it's wrong uh, that it's wrong. No, it's just the Holy Spirit changed my mind about it, and, and the, the Holy Spirit's changed my mind about a lot of things. The, the desires. This talks about the desires. I think uh, what was that verse? Uh, uh, the desire, okay, the desire of the righteous is only good. Well, my desires, this is my desire right now, uh, to, to have fellowship with you and, and get our nose in the scriptures and learn. That's my desire. I didn't have that desire before. The thought of having, talking for an hour or two with someone about the Bible before, I would have thought, that's crazy. I don't have any interest in that. So the Lord has, and the Spirit has transformed my desires so that now I desire this kind of a thing and the, the things that I used to desire are sickening to me. Uh, and it was never a conscious decision to change my desires. Uh, let's see verse 23 in the Amplified. The desire of the consistently righteous brings only good, but the expectation of the wicked brings wrath. 
All right, that's the same. Verse 24 of the KJV. There is that there is that scattereth and yet increaseth. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. God, brother, you'll have to translate that for me. Well, basically, I think he's saying that um, if, you, if you like to help others, then you know you will be fulfilled. Um, and if you like to, uh, uh, yeah, if you like to um, increase, then if you like to help others to be increased, then you will be increased. All right. Let, let me look at that in the Amplified. Maybe it'll make it real clear. I think you're probably right, but first, I mean, I'm a brother, I'm an educated person, and I, that verse there completely confounds me. Okay, verse 24 in the Amplified, there are those who generously scatter abroad and yet increase more, and there are those who withhold more than is fitting or what is justly due, but it results only in want. Okay, so I, I can understand now that you're, 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 uh, conclusion on it was correct that uh, if we're generous if we're givers then uh, we'll probably receive it, receive it back and more and if if we're stingy and don't want to help pe people then uh, you know it'll backfire on us and we'll end up probably in poverty because of our selfishness mm -hmm. yeah anything else on that before I move to 25 well, you know, basically is common sense, you know. Uh -huh. Okay, here's <laughs> verse 25 in the KJV. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Yeah, basically, is, I think is elaborating uh, the prior verse. Yeah, the liberal soul, liberal, not in the sense that we think of modern day liberal politics, but liberal meaning a, a, a generous. Well, would you say that's right? Uh, and then, and he that watereth shall be watered also. Okay, I think the Amplified will support that. The liberal person shall be enriched, and he who waters shall himself be watered. <laughs> oh, it doesn't, doesn't really elaborate much. But I think you're right, that's what it means. It's a, it's, it's a continuation of the previous verse. In verse 26, KJV, he that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him. <clears throat> but, but blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. That selleth it. Hmm. That's interesting. It says selleth it rather than giveth it. Well, you know, um, let's say you have a lot of corn. I mean, the fact that you are withholding corn means you have some corn. And if you are withholding corn and those guys out there do not have, not even a corn, and you are withholding it, then obviously you will get cursed you know, from the people you know, but you know if you share it I mean, sharing means like you can actually give it away and if they can actually afford to buy it then they can they'll buy it but if if you're going to if you're going to withdraw uh, withhold any corn um, even if uh, they can buy the corn and, and hungry, then uh, obviously you will be cursed. But if you have that fair business and, and to help those guys, help the people who are in need of corn, then obviously you will be blessed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I, I think in the, when it says, he that withholdeth corn, um, I, I think that might be a person that's actually hoarding it. That yeah, you could say that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that has a lot, has plenty of corn for himself, 
but as, a, as, and has built up a big supply of corn and other people don't have any and he, he chooses to, well, just let them starve. I'll, I want to hoard it all for myself. Uh, so let me see in the Amplified how it phrases it. Six. The people curse him who holds back grain when the public needs it. But a blessing from God and man is upon the head of him who sells it. Yeah. I mean, what kind of person would do that? I guess maybe they're just thinking that, uh, hey, uh, um, uh, I don't want to run out. Uh, maybe there's a drought or something and there's, there's, a, there's a big shortage, but I have a big uh, supply of it and I want to keep it all for myself. I don't, I'm afraid it might run out if I sell some of it. So, but in the, that person's willing to let the other people starve. That'd be horrible. Okay, verse 27 in the KJV here. Uh, he that diligently seeketh good procureth favor, but he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. Yeah. Hmm. That's, um, you know, the same thing that we've been talking about. Um, you'll be blessed, you know, uh, if you seek good stuff. And uh, you won't be blessed. In fact, uh, mischief, uh, if you keep on seeking, seeking mischief, and that itself will come to him. You know. mm -hmm. Yeah, that's obvious, I guess. Uh, 27 in the Amplified. He who diligently seeks good seeks God's favor, but he who searches after evil, it shall come upon him. Yeah. Okay, 28. He that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. So true. So true. And a lot of people, they think that uh, money will take care of them and thereby making more money and without actually knowing that you know, uh, when they do so, there will be a uh, faster route to their downfall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's a, uh, there are some people though that are evil and attain riches. Uh, now, uh, Probably eventually, it can, it'll crumble and it'll all backfire on them because it's Ill, it's, it's ill-gotten gain, and yet there are rich people that are evil, and um, even even uh, the, the verses we're talking about here. On one hand, it's it's saying uh, when you're righteous, you're going to be blessed and you'll get wealthy and you you good all kinds of good things are going to come to you, and and, and therefore. It was very common with the Jewish people at the time of Jesus to think that if someone was wealthy, that they must be righteous because they're blessed and therefore they must be righteous. Because that's why, why they're so blessed. And, uh, and that's why getting back to that question when uh, the rich young ruler was, was uh, denounced by Jesus, uh, uh, his, his, Jesus said it's it's so hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. And his his disciples and apostles, they were shocked by that statement because I think the common belief at that time was based upon this teaching they're going through here is that, wait a second, they, aren't they righteous people because they're, they're, they're blessed? I mean, if you have a lot of money, you must be a good person. Uh, God's blessing them, but but um, Jesus says no. It's uh, it's you can't base it on on wealth. He, he says that they said well, if that's if that's the case, Lord, um, if this rich young ruler here can't, is not going to go to heaven, 
then how is it possible for anyone to be saved? And that's when Jesus said, well, with man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So uh, it's, it's impossible for man to get to heaven through their own effort, through own, their own merit. But with God it's possible if they'll trust God instead of their own merit. Uh, but I think that uh, the idea that um, uh, when you do good, uh, if, if, if you do good, you'll be blessed. But there are some people who do good, and they, they, they end up <coughs> suffering, suffering persecution and tribulations. I mean, look at all the great saints throughout history uh, who have suffered persecution and tribulation and martyrdom. Not everybody who is saved and, and practices righteousness, that, that doesn't mean that they're going to have a wonderful life. Uh, someone said to me once years ago that uh, you know, he was into this prosperity, faith, uh, name it and claim it type of thing. And he said, Jesus said, to came, says, the scripture says, Jesus said he came to give us life and give it more abundantly. And he thought that that abundance was uh, abundance of wealth and blessings and stuff and and from these verses we're getting here it that seems to be true and yet what did we see that the apostle paul got he got an abundance of suffering he was beaten with with, with a rod uh, uh, many times he was got 39 lashes many times he was he was a snake bitten and he was stoned and left for dead and finally beheaded and he was imprisoned for a long time too. So he got an abundance, an abundance of suffering. So I, I think that on one hand, yeah, uh, as, as a rule, we we can we can be blessed by uh, being Christians and uh, living a, a good life, and, and we'll probably get good results. But it doesn't save us from Christian persecution that's been going on throughout history abundance i think uh, in a lot of ways uh, can be understood different ways but for me um you know when we are abundant whether that's uh, spiritually or uh, physically i think that's quite far from the kingdom of god um, only when we are poor in the in spirit, and we can actually uh, see the kingdom of God, in a way. And a lot of people, when they like, for example, prosperity gospel, they only consider in the in the means of physicalness. But when Christ said, for example, in Matthew five, you know, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You know. Um, that's where the abundance is, uh, the kingdom of heaven, you know. So in, or, in order for us to gain that sort of abundance of that kingdom of heaven, we must be poor in spirit. We must be hungry for the word of God, you know. So abundance in, in, uh, in me is actually... Uh, being poor in spirit. Well, I, I see the verse uh, "poor in spirit" as um, a contrast. And someone who's rich in spirit is someone who has a lot of spiritual pride. And right, right. I mean, a lot of self and self righteousness. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, and and that someone who's poor in spirit, it doesn't have spiritual pride. They're humble. And, and maybe maybe hardships in life has even caused more humility, and those hardships brought them on their knees and about crying out to God. Right. And, so the true what I'm saying is the the true abundance, the true abundance abundance is actually in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. You know, and that goes along with what Jesus said about. Uh, don't build, store up yourselves treasures on earth. The, the kind of things that people think that, uh, well, I want to be blessed. Uh, 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 I'll do good things and stuff, and but I expect to be blessed with monetary re return and and uh, you know wealth and, 
and the new car and all these things. And, and, and yet, uh, Jesus said, those things just will rust and moths will eat them. And, you know, but if you build up treasures in heaven, uh, that, that's a real abundance. That's, that's an abundance of blessings that were never, never will be destroyed. that will last throughout eternity. Right. So, right. Christ is said to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and thereby everything will be added on to us. So, yeah, true. and, and uh, also it doesn't say that everything will be added on to us uh, right now in this life. Sometimes they think the good things that he's going to add on to us are going to come uh, after our resurrection, that then we're going to get these blessings that you know, <laughs> we thought, well, I didn't get it blessed much now, but I just had hardships. But uh, uh, in, in, in eternity, then that's when those blessings will be, thank will be thankful for them. I'll say both, in, 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 whether that's uh, the life we are living in or uh, thereafter. Um, as long as we seek his righteousness and the kingdom of God, you know, we, we, we really don't have to worry about what to eat next. Yeah. Uh, or, or, and such. Because our greed and certain uh, love of money, and you know, we tend to you know, keep our pride and and uh, arrogance. Uh, but uh, when we uh, truly seek His righteousness and the kingdom of God, you know, both this life and thereafter, all will be added. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, let me see. Uh, and verse 29 in the KJV says, He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind, but the fool shall be servant to the wise of heart. There's a famous novel, Inherit the Wind. I'm not familiar with the story, really, but... Uh, and maybe that's where this saying that, that saying came from, this verse here, inherit the wind. Uh, what do you think that means? He that troubles his own house shall inherit the wind. Well, it's like the it's like the wind. It's like something uh, very vain uh, when you travel your house uh, uh, when you do bad things for your own sake um, even for your family um, that's quite uh, foolish in a way of course uh, so when you are foolish you will be you will become only servant to the wise um, so as uh, verse 28 is saying, but the righteousness, righteous shall flourish as branch. Now, if you are not righteous, but only self-righteous, that is actually troubling yourself in your own house. And when you do so, that's like, I call it a fart. <laughs> like a fart in the air, like, like the wind. Mm -hmm. Does you know, and, uh, and and obviously the fool he becomes a fool when he does so. Um, you know, well, it shall be servant to the wise of heart. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that the, the he that troubled his own house shall inherit the wind. Uh, I'm thinking of a household of people, and let's say there's a bad child, and, and he, he just uh, he's so much trouble. And finally, he's just kicked out of the house, and he just just go with the wind. Uh, maybe that's one way, or, or another way. Maybe the wind could be, um, you know, wind is wind is turbulent. So if you're creating trouble, then you're going to get tr uh, turbulence back in your life. And uh, let me see what the amplified says here. That verse. Uh, uh, Um, he who troubles his own house shall inherit the wind. Well, oh, that didn't help me at all. 
and the foolish shall be servant to the wise of heart. Wow. They didn't amplify that verse at all, brother. Okay. okay, let's go to verse 30 in the KJV. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Wow. Well, that's the famous saying, all of us who do evangelism, he that winneth souls is wise. The, the tree of life, uh, uh, I, I think I learned this from either Brother Mitch, remember Brother Mitchell Belenkoff, uh, or Aaron Budget or something, but the uh, interesting thing is that in the, in the garden, you know, you had the, the tree of life and you had the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And uh, they would say, that the tree of knowledge of good and evil is the law and the tree of life is Jesus. And uh, we know that that's the only way we get life is through Jesus and Jesus was put on nailed to the tree. And so uh, I, that's to me, the tree of life in the garden is a picture of, of uh, faith in God, faith in Jesus and, and uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is faith in okay uh just tell me the rules I'll, I'll follow the rules my own way i'll do the best i can and i don't need god i'll i'll, I'll do well enough you just just give me the rules and i'll be okay uh, well, you know um a tree of life when you have a tree of life you, you will enjoy the fruit of it obviously and by enjoying that uh, you will have life you know so I consider a tree of life as the life, uh, Jesus Christ, of course. Uh, so the righteous, I could, I could just, in, I could, uh, if I were to reiterate, then the righteous will enjoy the the life uh, given, uh, and the righteous will inherit the life. Uh, the right righteous. Uh, will have the fruit uh, from the tree uh, from a tree of life and the righteous will win uh, people uh, so bottom line is being righteous is having life being righteous is having life of course righteous doesn't mean self-righteous, you know, just because you think this is right, that doesn't mean it is right. I'm talking about the righteousness in God, the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Uh, so being righteous equates to life, and being that actually win people. I think that's what the, what the, what the scripture is saying. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, the, K the Amplified says, The fruit of the uncompromisingly righteous is a tree of life, and he who is wise captures human lives for God as a fisher of men. He gathers and receives them for eternity. Oh, well, that's all true. Uh, the... Uh, the idea of uh, so so you know what the, the what, what the pastor is saying is that be righteous and and the way to be righteous is to believe on Jesus Christ and you will have life and by by believing on Jesus Christ uh, you will uh, you will become you will be a fisherman of man and that he that wins souls Whoever wins people to Christ is wise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So verse 31 is, uh, Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's kind of like the, 
the, the, the conclusion in this whole chapter has been about this same theme. Right, and, uh, and we got to, I think, kind of focus on the, the word uh, recompense. Uh, and recompense means uh, to make uh, amends to, uh, to someone for uh, loss or harm, suffered, uh, compensate. I mean, that's the meaning. So obviously the righteous will suffer. And, and apparently, uh, you know, he may lose uh, certain things or appears to be he's, he lost something. But um, he will be compensated. The righteous shall be compensated with eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting how the tail end of this chapter led us right into where we want to be at the end of the discussion, uh, and that is um, the gospel. It says that uh, he who win souls is wise. So let's do something wise right now and tell the people uh, what that means. We want to win souls and uh, if someone's watching right now, brother, and they say, well, this is, I, I don't really understand everything you guys have been talking about. I'm not that familiar with Christianity and the Bible. It's interesting, but the most important thing we want them to know that's in the Bible is how they can get into heaven. And let's assume that the, the, someone watching right now believes there really is a heaven and a hell. And they, they, they really do desire to want to go to heaven. They don't want to go to hell. They want heaven. But they don't know for sure what they've got to do because most people think if I ask an average person on the street I said do you think you're going to go to heaven and if so why by far the most common answer you're going to get is well I'm not sure I'm going to go to heaven I hope so uh, but if, if I go to heaven it's because I'm a good person uh, and you know I, I, I you know follow the Ten Commandments I follow the Golden Rule and, Maybe they're even in a religion. They say, I, I'm, I practice my religion, and I attend church, and I light candles, and I confess to the priest, and I pray five times a day on a rug, and I go to Mecca. Whatever, they, they're, they're thinking that, they're thinking that salvation is based upon how much good they do, and if they do it well enough, that God will accept them. Uh, but that's, that's a lie from the devil. But that, that's what most people in the world believe they think they can work their way to heaven brother what why don't you tell them the truth right i mean that's the main difference between the the rest of uh, so-called religions out there uh, they believe on the work of man you know on uh, the merits of man and if you do certain things and you know you will enter uh, into the kingdom of god if you do good things uh, then you will see the kingdom of God and so on and so forth. Bottom line is, uh, what are you going to choose? Are you going to choose the work of man uh, or are you going to choose the work of God? Uh, Christ said, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And what that means is that unless you repent, unless you change your mind from believing on the work of man, unless you change your mind from that sort of things to believing on the work of God, which is Jesus Christ, you cannot see the kingdom of God because no matter how good you are, no matter how good you think you are, uh, we all fall short, always fall short. We are, we can, we are not, perfect beings out here. Everyone, uh, everyone is a sinner and that uh, the wages of sin is death. Wages of sin is not repentance of sin. The wages of sin is death. So unless you are born... I don't know if you can hear me, but you're, you're 
audio just stopped. Uh, brother, can you? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the last thing I heard. Now maybe it's, it'll show up in the broadcast. The last thing I heard is you said the wages of sin is death. We all we all come short. And then uh, then I lost you for like fifteen seconds. Still there? Wrong with the Google Plus. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what? Google Plus is not perfect. Just like just like <laughs> mankind is not perfect, and that's the point you're making. That um, if a person is trying to get to heaven through personal merit, the standard they've got to meet is perfection, and no one has ever met that standard of perfection. No one ever will, except for Jesus Christ. And so unless we can be as good as Jesus and be perfect, we have to just admit, I fall short. I need, I need help. I can't do it. I can't be perfect. So what, what's their alternative? What can they do, brother? Well, the alternative is um, uh, to get the grace of God, and, and that is by simply by believing on Jesus Christ. And just like the jailer uh, said, what must I do? Uh, to be saved, and Paul and others uh, told them, you know, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. And you know, that's what we need to do, because otherwise, what when we just trust and believe on other men or other religion, other doctrines, any sort of work of man, you know, those will always fall, fall short. So it's not something that we do, uh, but it's something that God does. Mm -hmm. And that is by believing on Christ. And that is actually why Christ came, and, and to do the work of God. And that is to believe on Jesus Christ. And he will be coming back soon to fulfill the will of God so that we can be uh, risen up the last day and have everlasting life. So, again, it's the work of man versus work of God. I mean, when you think about all other religions, and I used to be in other religions myself, uh, you got to do certain things. you got to meditate. you got to do whatever, uh, good, you know, good things. Uh, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do good things, but all those work are quite subjective before God, you know. So... When Christ said, repent and believe the gospel, it means to repent from that, to change your mind of, uh, from believing that sort of work of man to believing on Jesus Christ, which is the work of God. Mm -hmm. and, and through that, uh, you know, we can be saved, and through that we can have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you a couple of follow-up questions, but I to kind of sum up what you've said here is that um, religions are telling people you've got to do, 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 do. And if you do enough, maybe it'll be enough and God will accept you. But, but Jesus says, no, it's done. Jesus has already done everything that needs to be done. And uh, so uh, all we got to do is believe in him. Now the scripture says, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It's really that simple. We believe on him. We trust him completely. Instead of trusting our own ability, we trust him instead. But I want to ask you a couple of questions here. And if you try to answer these like as short as you can, because i got several of them. One, tell me, who is this Jesus? Jesus? Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the very representation of, of God. Uh, God, so-called God in the, in the flesh. So if God were to come uh, down and dwell among us as, as flesh, Jesus Christ would be that very representation of God. Okay. Uh, and then, so you, he came down, he, why did he come down from heaven? He came down to, um, because God loves us, just like just what John 3.16 says, because God loves us so much, God, God loved the world, you know, that's why he came to save us from our uh, eternal damnation. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, the only way to uh, to have everlasting life uh, to be crucified, to be uh, to be buried, to be resurrected with Him is through by believing on Jesus Christ. Okay, so He was crucified. Tell me what happened on the cross. It it, it finished. He he has he has uh, he has done everything. Ever. Anyone can possibly do, and that is to, uh, to, to carry on all the sins of the world, so that when see, when we die, that's due to our sin, and because Christ paid for our sin, you know, it's like we die with them, and also resurrect and resurrected with him when he did so. So the reason why he was on the cross, and that's for to pay for our sin. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when he died on the cross, uh, he paid for our sins. Um, does that? What does that mean, though? Does that mean that uh, he paid for our sins until we get saved, or did he pay for all of our sins? Yes, of course, he paid for all our sins, and the problem is that you have to believe that. If you don't believe that, then then there is no actually no point. <laughs> so, you know, it means all sins. All sins mean all sins, whether that's past, present, or future. And eternal life means eternal, uh, without having uh, beginning or the end. So, and, so. So that means then that he, uh, the sin, my sin, your sin, everybody who's watching right now, sin is no longer an issue because he's already paid for all the sin. Is that, is that correct? Especially those who believe, yes. Yeah. Uh, so so now did, he, did he really die on the cross? Of course. And then what happened after that? Well, he was buried in the rich man's tomb. And then three days later, he rose. You know, what what is uh, the uh, uh, significance of him being raised from the dead? How did he get raised from the dead? Well, if it is not if it is if it is not uh, if it's not risen, then there's actually no point. It's just like any other religion, you know, if there is no resurrection, even the Buddha, even other other uh, ancient Egyptian religions, it's all about good life. But what about after this, you know? Because he is risen, you know, that's the, one of the main difference between so-called Christianity and other religions. This life and thereafter. The, the resurrection of Christ is quite required for us to have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, have a good life. <laughs> you know? So uh, he said that uh, the Jewish people demanded he give him a sign because of his claims. He claimed he was God and this Messiah and Savior, and they, they, they demanded he give him a sign to prove it. And he said he would only give him one sign, and that is the I know, John. As the sign of Jonah. Like right. Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. So will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. And so he said that this death, burial, and resurrection would be the sign he would give us, give the Jews, and he get, and that's the sign for us too, that he is who he said he was. He's God. He has the power over life and death. And he's also said, that uh, he's the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming under, under the Father but through him. So he is the exclusive Savior. He's the only way for us to get eternal life, right? You know, many people... See, I think Oprah said there are many ways to, to God. Uh, that's not correct. You know, some even now say that there are you know, different religions will lead, to, lead you to God. Which is uh, which? Which is a lie. Of course, there are many ways to Christ. Uh, meaning, uh, whether uh, you are in different culture or country, 
or, uh, uh, or different experiences in life, uh, the way you come to Christ may be different than others, but uh, only through Jesus Christ, only by believing on, on Jesus Christ can one be saved, can one actually come to God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what we're asking these people to believe, when we say believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, is we want them to believe, one, he is God manifest in the flesh. He did die for our sins, so sin problem is, is solved. He did raise himself from the dead, so he does have the power over life and death. And, and, and he is the only way to get salvation. We need to you put your faith in him. He's the only way. Uh, Buddha can't save you. Muhammad can't save you. The Pope can't save you. The Virgin Mary can't save you. Only Jesus can save you. So that's what we're asking you to believe when we say believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that. Right. And you put your faith in him. He, believe he has the ability to give you eternal life and believe he is faithful to keep the promise. He promises eternal life to anyone who comes to him for it. Come to him for it. Ask for it. Please say, Jesus, I want eternal life. I'm trusting you. And he gives it to you. Then what happens? Once you get this eternal life, what happens? Once you get eternal life, then you live forever. That's, that's what it means. Um, but what happens if what happens if they get eternal life by believing in Jesus and then they go out and commit some sins? Well, you know, there are, there are two different types of believing. Uh, so called uh, in this on YouTube, there is a, a, a thing called a great debate community, whether uh, God exists or not. When you really think about it, that's quite vain and, and nothing but vexation of the spirit meaning that it only confuses people because by believing in the sense of existence of God will not save anyone. But when we say believe on Jesus Christ, that means uh, believing and trusting on what Christ said and done for us completely, meaning that uh, when he said that all our sins are forgiven, that means all our sins are forgiven. Uh, if you are if you are saved and you believe on Christ, yet you sin, then confess your sin to God, to Christ. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you won't get spanked. You know, like a good father. You know, if you become a child of God and you do bad things, you're gonna get spanked. That doesn't mean that you are not a son anymore. That doesn't mean that you are not a son of God anymore. You know, no good daddy will to throw out a son. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's not, it's, it doesn't even logically make sense. You know, just like, uh, just like my father, you know, I am a son of my father. You know, no matter what kind of bad things that I do towards him or against him, I'm still his son. But guess what? I'm going to get spanked. You know, or I'll, I'll have to pay for it one way or the other. This likewise, when you believe on Jesus Christ, you are given the power to become a son of God, just like John one twelve says. And once you become a son of God, you will always be a son of God, no matter what. It sounds to me like like you're saying that uh, uh, when you believe on Jesus, you get eternal life. In fact, it says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So Jesus gives you as a gift eternal life. And according to you, this really is eternal life. It's not just temporary life that you could lose if you if you start sinning. You, you, you can't lose it for any reason. It's, you really do have eternal life. Right. If any, 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 any God will take away your salvation, uh, that won't be true God anymore. And I mean, that sort of conditional. I mean, what kind of father? Let's say, hey, if you do bad things, and uh, you're not, a, you're not, you're not my son anymore. That that logically doesn't make sense. And also, that, that sort of conditional, quote unquote, love is not of God. You know, God will not take away the very salvation given to you. You know, He yeah. has given to you already. Yeah. So when someone believes in Jesus, they get 
what we call born again as a child of God. And then they, no matter what, they can never get unborn. In other words, uh, uh, it's, it's an event. Right. I, heard, I heard Jack Smack phrase it this way recently. Uh, uh, when you put your faith in Jesus at that moment, it's an event that happens. And you can never go back in the past and undo an event. It might never happen. It's an event. It happened. It can never be undone. Right, and um, some may grow faster than the other, uh, some may grow slower, and some may even have dormant, uh, like, you know, not growing at all. But still, you know, once you're born again, you cannot be unborn. So, now, we know that when they get born again, the Holy Spirit of God lives inside of them forever and will never leave them. But uh, so... If they want to grow and mature, as you said, spiritually, to a mature Christian, well, what do you suggest they do? I think the uh, Ephesians 6 um, gives you a uh, pretty uh, good outline how and what we should do. Um, constant prayer and uh, edifying brethren um, and striving for... Uh, Faith, because we are given with different measure of faith, and uh, depending on where our faith is, uh, that much will show in a way. So you know whether that's by doing good works or whether by uh, you know uh, good things for others, um, those things uh, will result. Uh, the fruit of love. I would say is charity, and um, we have hope and faith and charity. As Paul said, the best thing is the charity. Uh, there are many fruits of the Holy Spirit, uh, and that that uh, that the fruit of love. Uh, I think that is uh, actually the yeah. yeah. And that gets, back, that gets back to what I was talking about earlier in that verse I love so much now. Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. So uh, if, you're, if you've are if you been watching this video and you understand everything we've said, you might be saying, is that all I got to do? Is I've got to believe this, what you told me about Jesus, that he's God and he paid for my sins and he rose from the dead and he, he promised me eternal life. And, 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 and I got, all I got to do is believe that and I get it. Uh, yeah. He said, it's easy. My yoke is easy. So believe it and you'll receive it. Then he said, my burden is light. So after you get saved, he's not putting you under some kind of religious bondage. The, his burden is light. The, the only thing he says he wants us to do after that is, Will you just love each other? <laughs> Come on. I've got to put the Holy Spirit of God inside you now, and it's going to start, he'll start transforming you. But all I'm asking you to do, will you just love each other now? Brother, that's, that's not too much to ask, is it? Well, that's not too much to ask, uh, but we all do struggle, and that's all part of the walk. Yeah. And, and that's where the all fun is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, brother, it's time uh, we finished uh, the Proverbs study. We, per, we, we finished the invitation to salvation. So I, think, I want to thank you for joining me and say, well done. I, I, I hope someday Jesus will say to both of us, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. Uh, I'll close this live broadcast now. Uh, uh, bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.